Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hi. Okay, everybody, welcome. Uh, we're going to begin. So I'm going to start sharing the screen with you. There it is. Okay. And also, I'm going to be calling attendance right now. So just a second. Okay, here we go. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Ana Cecilia Rodriguez de Perez. Okay. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Okay, welcome. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Carlos Roberto Dominguez. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Present. Welcome. Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Elisa Arelí López Campos. Elisa Arelí López Campos. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Good evening, teacher present. Hello. Welcome. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Erika Marisela Morales Cordero. Present teacher. I'm sorry. Elmer. Okay. Welcome, yes. Elmer. Thank you. Thanks. Erika eh, Marisela Morales Cordero. Erika Marisela. Gabriel Antonio Nájera Martel. I'm here. Welcome. Um, Gabriel Antonio? Ah, I saw you. Okay. Thank you. I can see you. Okay. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Present. Welcome. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Sorry. Okay. Um, Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Rocino Amilcar Hernández Linares. I am here. Welcome. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. Sandra Yanet Vázquez Cortés. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Present. Welcome. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Present. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, just calling some of the names again. Ana Cecilia Rodríguez de Pérez. Present teacher. Welcome. Carlos Roberto Domínguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Erika Marisela Morales Cordero. I'm here. Welcome. Gabriela Alejandra Aceituno Ayala. Present. Welcome. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. 
Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Present, teacher. Welcome. Sandra Janet Vázquez Cortés. Sandra Janet Vázquez Cortés. Okay. I'm just uh, going to call some of the attendants uh, at the end of the class one more time. So uh, for the time being, this is what we have. Everybody welcome. This is Advanced English 1, and that's me, Ivan Danyang, at your service. Once again, this is session number four, and today's August the 31st of 2023. Okay, the last day of this month. Let's do this, okay? But first, we have an activity, okay? There is a review activity. Well, not exactly a review, but a practice activity. Oh, what, what happened? <laughs> okay, I don't know what happened, but uh, there is a practice activity that we're going to do here. And uh, it's over here. So what are we going to do? Take a look. Read the dialogues and complete the sentences. If two answers are possible, write both of them. So what is this? Ada says, for example, Sam isn't happy when he has nothing to do. Gary says, I know, it really bothers him. So Sam can stand having nothing to do. You can also can say, you can also say, I'm sorry, uh, Sam can stand to have nothing to do. So I basically want you to rewrite the sentence, okay? Uh, checking the verb, like in this case, void, you have to choose whether you can use the gerund form only or the gerund form into infinitive. So I want you to rewrite the sentences. There, there are five sentences right here, six actually, but the first one is an example. And I want you to work on this. I'm going to give you four minutes for this activity. So I want you to work individually, okay, for four minutes. I'm going to give you four minutes. And after those four minutes, we're going to check answers. So uh, the second one is, uh, Vic says, I hardly ever go to school parties anymore. So me neither. They're not as much fun as they used to be. So Vic and Joan avoid uh, doing what? So you have that. Oh, wait a second. I, I believe... Now we completed this exercise yesterday. I got I got confused. I'm sorry. I apologize. This is not the exercise we were supposed to do. We completed this one yesterday. I apologize. I got the wrong one. The right one is here. I'm sorry. Just let me uh, give it to you. It's right here. Okay, now we're not going to do this one because we did it yesterday, okay? Now, this is the one, okay, that we didn't do. Now, um, I'm sorry again. So, uh, everybody, can you see the screen? Madeline says present. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay, thank you very much. I apologize, I was showing the wrong exercise. Now, the exercise is here. Which verbs and expressions can complete the sentences? Write the correct numbers of the sentences next to the verbs. For example, you have I, blah, 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 spend time spending time outdoors every day. And the second one is I, blah, 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 to spend time outdoors every day. So in this case, you have option number one and option number two. The first one, am afraid of. Okay, you can say number one, I am afraid of spending time outdoors every day. So number one is possible. What about number two? I am afraid of to spend time outdoors every day. This is not possible. That's why I don't know what's going on, but it keeps doing this. Okay. I'm experiencing some technical problems apparently. So uh, what about number two? Number two is not possible. That's why we only have number one. Let's take a look at letter J. You have, I love spending time outdoors every day. So number one is possible. Number two, I love to spend time outdoors every day. Number two is also possible. That's why you have number one and number two. So basically, I want you to check which ones are possible for each of the verbs right here, okay? Um, then you have am into, avoid, can't stand, don't mind, enjoy, feel like, hate, insist on, prefer, and worry about. Now, I'm going to give you uh, three minutes for this, okay? After three minutes, we're going to check answers, okay? Everybody, let's do this.
Okay, let's take a look. Everybody, uh, number, well, letter A, you have, I'm afraid of spending time outdoors every day. If you say, I'm afraid of to spend time outdoors every day, that would be wrong. So what about letter B? Volunteer, please raise your hand. What do we have? What happens when, okay, Gabriel Antonio. Mm -hmm. Letter B would be not class number one. It would be um, into spending time outdoors every day. Yeah, I'm into spending time outdoors every day. Only that one. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Okay, uh, the next one, letter C. If you know, please raise your hand. Uh, letter C. Anyone, please Let's participate. Byron. I avoid spending time outdoors every day. I avoid to spend time outdoors every day. So one and two. Yes. Okay. Actually, in this case, it's only one. Which one would you choose? One or two? There's only one possible... Uh, way to complete this. That will be, in this case, number one. I avoid spending time Number outdoors. one. Yeah, number one. Thank you. It's, uh, I avoid spending time outdoors every day. Thank you, Byron. Uh, letter D, what do you have? Letter D, Saul Arnulfo. Okay, uh, letter D, I can stand spending time outdoor every day. So, number one. Yeah, I think that is number one. Okay. All right. Okay, there's number one. But also number two. It's possible to use can stand with both forms, the gerund form and the two infinitive. You can say, I can't stand spending time outdoors every day. And you can say, I can't stand to, st to spend time outdoors every day. Both forms are considered valid. So you can use either of them. Thank you very much, Saul. What about letter E? Don't mind. How about don't mind? Is it one or one and two? What do you think? If you know, please raise your hand. Gabriela Alejandra, say tú no. I think it's both. both. One and two. Both. Yes. I don't mind spending time outdoors every day, and I don't mind to spend time outdoors every day. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's actually only one. Okay. Oh. When you use the verb don't mind, uh, you can only use the gerund form. You don't mind doing something. Okay, but thank, thanks for your participation. So it's only number one. I don't mind spending time outdoors every day. Okay, uh, what about letter F? Enjoy, uh, Saul, Arnulfo. I think that we can use both. In letter F? Yeah, the I, two options. The two options are okay. Actually, enjoy is only used with the gerund form. You enjoy doing something, but you don't enjoy to do something. It's only number one. Okay, enjoy, right? So and enjoy spending time outdoors every day and only that one, okay? Thanks for participating. What about letter G? Feel like. How about letter G right there? Feel like. Uh, Carlos Dominguez. Carlos, your microphone. Sorry, teacher. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, little G, um, I spend, I, I, I feel like spending time, time outdoor every day. So number one only. Yes, number one. Okay, that is correct. It's only number one. I feel like spending time outdoors every day because like is a preposition. Therefore, you can only use the German form. Okay, okay. good. Thank you. Uh, what about letter H? Hate. If you know, please raise your hand. Uh, Byron. I hate to spend time outdoors. Only number two. Only number two. I hate to spend time outdoors every day. Okay. Number two is possible, but so is number one. You can hate doing something. I'm or number hate to one. Do something. Okay. Uh huh. Both forms are possible. 
I hate spending time outdoors every day, or I hate to spend time outdoors every day. The hate is one of those verbs that can take both the gerund form and the to infinitive. Thank you very much. Letter I, insist on. Okay, who knows the answer? Please raise your hand and uh, share it with the class. Gabriel Antonio. Number one, you told me. I can't hear you, sorry. I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Gabriel. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's me, but I don't know if, if the rest of you are experiencing the same, but I really don't understand what, what Gabriel is saying. Yes, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Please listen. Uh -huh. I think I think um, th there's a problem with your microphone. Yes, yes, teacher. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, and right now it didn't work at all. I we I only hear like muffled sounds, like something like that, but but I could not understand. Sorry, uh, Saul. If I understood teacher, correctly, teacher. Sorry. Sorry, it's not Saul. It's, it's uh, uh, Carlos. Gabriel. Gabriel. Uh, yes, Carlos. Perdón. Dice uh, um, Gabriel. Dice number one. Number one. Ah, yeah, it's in the chat, right? Okay, number one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, teacher. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, insist on. Okay, totally. Correct. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Gabriel. So, um, yeah, that's it. And, and I apologize, uh, Gabriel, but but I believe there's there's a little problem with your, your microphone. Okay, sometimes I can hear you, sometimes I, I can't. Okay, but thanks for your participation. Uh, letter J, love can take both forms, the gerund form and the to infinitive. Uh, letter K, prefer. If you know, please raise your hand. What do we have here? Prefer. Mm -hmm. Who can tell me? Prefer. Nobody? No, number one. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, but always let's raise a hand. Okay. But thank you. Thank you very much. Number one, Elizabeth says, okay, prefer. All right. And Saul was also raising his hand. Do you agree, Saul? I'm not sure, but I think that we can use the second one. Also. Second one too. Okay. Let's see. You can use both actually. You prefer doing something, or you can pre you you prefer doing something, or you prefer to do something. Okay, uh, either form is right. Thank you. Okay, Elizabeth and Saul, and the last one. Worry about what about worry about? What do we have here, Saul Arnulfo? I think that the first one because we had the preposition before. That's right. About is a preposition. Therefore, only the gerund form is possible. So you worry about doing something. I worry about spending time outdoors every day. Okay, everybody. That is good. Okay. Thanks for the effort right there. And now we have to do a uh, listening and speaking activity. Okay. So I'm, I'm changing the slide. So uh, this is an exercise that we could not finish yesterday because we didn't have the time, but we're gonna do it today. Uh, listen to Paul and Andrea talk about their families. What kind of family did each person grow up in? How are their families changed? How have their families changed? Okay, so the people are Andrea, Andrea's husband, Andrea's sister-in-law, Paul's sister, Paul, and Paul's mother. And the situations are, has two daughters, B, doesn't know her in-laws very well. That's Andrea's situation. Andrea doesn't know her in-laws very well. Who has three brothers? Who is looking forward to seeing the family? Who will be cooking for 12 people? And who is a law student? I am going to play the track and I want you to take notes, okay? Uh, just write the number and the letter next to it. Uh, and after I play the track, we're going to check answers together. Okay, so um, here I go. Let me know if you can hear it. Page six. Could you hear that? Yes, okay. Thank you. Yes, teacher. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, teacher. Thank you so much. Okay, let's do this. Two. How are their families different? B. Listen again. Match the people on the left with the phrases on the right. 
So, Andrea, I heard you're staying with your in-laws for the holidays. Well, yeah, I guess I've got no choice. My flight leaves tomorrow afternoon. How about you, Paul? Actually, I still live with my parents, so I don't have to go anywhere. You know, you don't sound very excited about your trip. I guess I'm just a little nervous. The whole time I was growing up, it was just me and my mom and dad. It was quiet around the house. Very quiet. But my husband's family is huge. I mean, there's so many people. Wow. How many? Well, he grew up in an extended family. So there's his parents and his grandparents and his little sister and his two younger brothers. No, wait, three little brothers, all under one roof. So that's what, nine total? Wow. What do they all do? Oh, let me think. My sister-in-law, she's the youngest, maybe 20 or 21. She's a law student here in Chicago. And the oldest brother-in-law is a musician in New York. The other brothers are a lawyer and what? Maybe a teacher, I think. And we haven't been married long, so I don't know them that well, you know? But they all seem very nice and friendly. So how about you? How big is your family? Well, when I was a kid, our family was a lot like your in-laws. It was me, my parents, my older sister and brother, and my grandparents, too. But both my grandparents passed away a while ago, unfortunately. So it's just the five of us now. Are your sister and brother coming in for the holidays? Yeah, they're coming with their families. My sister and her husband live near Boston. They have two little girls. Then my brother and his wife and their three kids will come over as well. My brother's a doctor here in Chicago. It'll be great. We love getting together. So that's... How many people is that? Uh, 12, I think. Wow, that's even more than my in-laws. Yeah, the hard part about it is my mom has to cook so much food. Of course, the great thing about having a big family is that there are a lot of people to help her. Okay, that's uh, the track. Question, would you like to listen to it one more time or are you ready to answer the questions? Elizabeth? One more time, please. One more time. Okay, I'm going to play it again. Okay, say good time and then we check. Page six. Two, how are their families different? B, listen again. Match the people on the left with the phrases on the right. So, Andrea, I heard you're staying with your in-laws for the holidays. Well, yeah, I guess I've got no choice. My flight leaves tomorrow afternoon. How about you, Paul? Actually, I still live with my parents, so I don't have to go anywhere. You know, you don't sound very excited about your trip. I guess I'm just a little nervous. The whole time I was growing up, it was just me and my mom and dad. It was quiet around the house. Very quiet. But my husband's family is huge. I mean, there's so many people. Wow. How many? Well, he grew up in an extended family. So there's his parents and his grandparents and his little sister and his two younger brothers. No, wait, three little brothers, all under one roof. So that's what? Nine total? Wow. What do they all do? Oh, let me think. My sister-in-law, she's the youngest, maybe 20 or 21. She's a law student here in Chicago. And the oldest brother-in-law is a musician in New York. The other brothers are a lawyer and what? Maybe a teacher, I think. And we haven't been married long, so I don't know them that well, you know? But they all seem very nice and friendly. So, how about you? How big is your family? Well, when I was a kid, our family was a lot like your in-laws. It was me, my parents, my older sister and brother, and my grandparents, too. But both my grandparents passed away a while ago, unfortunately. So it's just the five of us now. Are your sister and brother coming in for the holidays? Yeah, they're coming with their families. My sister and her husband live near Boston. They have two little girls. Then my brother and his wife and their three kids will come over as well. My brother's a doctor here in Chicago. It'll be great. We love getting together. So that's... How many people is that? Uh, 12, I think. Wow, that's even more than my in-laws.
Yeah, the hard part about it is my mom has to cook so much food. Of course, the great thing about having a big family is that there are a lot of people to help her. Okay, so number one, Andrea, that's letter B, doesn't know her in-laws very well. What about number two? Who can help me? Biden. It's letter C. Can you read it? It's letter C. Uh, uh, yep. Has uh, three brothers. Andrea's husband has three brothers. That's correct. Thank you, Byron. Okay. What about number three? Number three. What was the answer to this one? Gabriel Antonio. Yes, letter M. Letter F, yeah. Andrea's sister-in-law is a law student. Okay, that's correct. Thank you, Gabriel. Okay, uh, number four. Who has number four? Who can help us with number four? Wendy Carolina. Okay, uh, number four is Paul Sisters has two daughters. Letter A, that's right. Paul's yeah. sister has two daughters. That's correct. Thank you, Wendy. Very good. Number five. Who can help us with number five? Number five. Saul Adolfo. Saul? Uh, give me a moment. Uh... Okay. Uh, I think that is letter D. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Paul is looking forward to seeing the family. Okay, very good. Thank you, Saul. And the last one, obviously, will be letter E. Paul's mother will be cooking for 12 people. Okay, that's a lot of people to cook for. There you go. Okay, everybody. Very good. We still have to cover some information, so uh, I guess we're going to be moving a bit quicker. So after this exercise, we have uh, this. Take a look. Lesson objective 1.6, at the end of this section, participants will be able to understand and use noun clauses after the verb be. This is actually pretty easy. Take a look. Uh, the grammar is here, noun clauses after be. So what is a noun clause? A noun clause is a part of a sentence that has both, I'm going to zoom in, that has both a subject and a predicate. That, the word that is optional in a non-clause, in non-clause, non-clauses, sorry, after the verb be. Also notice the prepositions used in each sentence. You can say, for example, the only trouble with being a two-income family is that we don't spend as much time together. That's one, okay? So again, the only trouble with, preposition with, so after that you have to use a gerund. With being a two-income family is that we don't spend as much time together. Now, why is that in parentheses? Because it's optional. You don't necessarily have to use it. In other words, you can just leave it out and you can say the only trouble with being a two-income family is we don't spend much, uh, we don't spend as much time together. And that will be okay too. Okay. The second one, the big advantage of having grandma at home is that she can babysit more often. Now look, of is a preposition. Therefore, the verb that follows is in ing form, the gerund form, the nominal form of a verb. So the big advantage of having grandma at home is, and then you have that in parentheses. That means that you can use it or not. And you say the big advantage of having grandma at home is she can babysit more often. Just like that. It's not very difficult, okay? Just watch out for the prepositions and then you have to use a verb remember you have to use it in ing form then you use is and after that you use that if you want and you finish the idea more examples are here okay other phrases used to introduce noun clauses include the downside of by the way this is not in the book so i'm going to i'm going to share it with you via whatsapp um okay Where's WhatsApp? 
over here. Okay, this is this is not in the book. Okay, this is not in the in the manual. So um, I'm sending it to you via WhatsApp so you can have it and you can study that. You can have it for reference too. What's going on with this? So other phrases used to introduce noun clauses include the downside of, which is like the disadvantage of. The upside of is also like the advantage of, the good thing about. The hard part about, okay, lo difícil de, the hard part about, the good thing about, the only thing about, the trick to, the trick to is like when you say in Spanish, la clave para, okay, the trick to, la clave para hacer esto, the trick to doing this. The secret to is also similar, okay, the secret to, and one difficulty with. If you notice, all of these expressions finish in a preposition. You see, the downside of preposition, the upside of preposition again, the hard part about preposition, the good thing about preposition, the only thing about preposition, the trick to is a preposition, the secret to preposition, and one difficulty with. There are some examples. The downside, which is like la de ventaja o la parte mala, the downside of sharing a bedroom is that it's hard to have any privacy. The hard part about being a twin is that people are always calling you by the wrong name. You say, for example, Arnulfo, no, my name is, is, is Emilio. Okay, Emilio, no, my name is Arnulfo. They're calling you the name of your twin brother or twin sister. Uh, the trick to living in a crowded house is that you have to have a private space on your of your own. Uh, and one difficulty with being the youngest is that everyone is always telling you what to do. Okay, so that's it. Not very hard. Just remember, keep in mind this. After a preposition, you have to use the gerund form. And after the verb be, then you have the clause. It usually begins with that, but it's not absolutely necessary. Now, the phrases ending with a preposition can be followed by a gerund phrase. Okay not plus a gerund phrase or a noun phrase. Examples, look, the secret to getting along with your siblings, that's another one, the secret to getting along with your siblings, el secreto para llevarse bien con sus hermanos o con tus hermanos, the secret to getting along with your siblings is that you have to respect their privacy. Second example, the good thing about, and you can use a negative form, the good thing about not being in a big family is that you always get to choose what's on TV. Next, the upside, which the, that's the advantage of a large family. And now look at this. If you don't have a verb, you don't have to use a gerund, okay? If, if a verb is not there, don't, don't use a gerund. Like in this case, the upside of a large family, right? La ventaja de una familia grande, right? You don't have a verb right there, so you don't have to use a verb in ING, so careful with that. The upside of a large family is that you always have someone to, stand, to spend time with. And the last one, the only thing about working moms is that they have less time to spend with you. That's pretty much how it is. We're going to do an exercise right here, okay? And that exercise is over here. Complete these sentences with your own ideas. I'm going to give you about how long? About six minutes. I'm going to give you six minutes so you can complete these ideas, these sentences, I'm sorry, with your own ideas. For example, an advantage of being a twin is that you always have someone to hang out with. Like, you know, these two ladies, they're never alone, okay, because yeah, they're twins, okay? They keep each other's company. They keep each other company, I'm sorry. Number two, a problem with being an only child is, you can say, for example, I'm just going to give you an idea, right? The problem with being an only child, that means that you don't have any brothers or sisters, is that you are sometimes lonely, okay? Or is that you don't have someone to talk to at home? Or the problem with being an only child is that, you know, especially if you're an only child, you will probably know. If you are, I don't know if you are. One benefit of being the oldest is, okay, that your parents pay more attention to you. For example, just giving you ideas here, but I'm not going to continue, otherwise I will give you too many ideas. So um, I'm going to give you six minutes so you can complete this with your own ideas.
Let's do it. And after that, you're going to read those sentences for the class. Let's begin. Six minutes, no more. Use your imagination. What's going on? <laughs> this keeps happening. I don't know why. Going to use the opportunity to uh, call attendance again. Is Daisy Magdalena Hernandez here? Daisy Magdalena Hernandez Hernandez. Gabriela Laure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Sandra Yanet Vasquez Cortez. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Okay, time to check. So number two, a problem with being an only child is, who can tell me? Especially if you're an only child, that will be more meaningful. 
So um, who's an only child here? And maybe you can share your experience. Uh huh. Who who can tell me? You don't need to be an only child to answer, of course, right? This is I'm just saying. Um, does anybody have anything? Okay, Gabriel Antonio, please. A uh, problem with being an only child is that I don't play a video games with someone. <laughs> a problem with being an only child is that I, I don't have anyone to play video games with. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, that's that's a problem with being an only child, that's for sure. Okay, thank you. What about number three? One benefit of being the oldest. Okay, maybe okay, Saul. Okay, um, one benefit of being the older is that you you have more respect. Okay, one problem with being uh, sorry, one benefit of being the oldest is that you get more respect from from whom? From your parents. Okay, that could be it. You get more respect. Okay, all right. Okay, one benefit of being the oldest child, the oldest is that uh, you get more respect from from others, from your parents, and 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 also from your uh, own siblings. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, what about number four? A big disadvantage of having an older sibling, an older brother or sister, is what's a what's a big disadvantage of having an older sibling? A sibling is the brother or sister. Okay, so do you want to participate again? Yeah. Okay. I think that uh, uh, a bit a uh, big disadvantage of having an older sibling is that he can hit you because he is stronger. Okay, he can bully you. Okay, so one a big disadvantage of having an older sibling is that he can hit you. Okay. <laughs> he can bully you. Okay, because he's bigger and stronger. Okay, I guess I guess that's possible. And uh, number five, the best thing about having a big family is what's the best thing about having a big family? Elmer. Uh, the best thing about having a big family is that you have many people care you. Okay, that you have many people to care for you. Okay, that's right. You know, another best thing about having a big family is that you receive a lot of presents on your birthday. Okay, yeah, that's a good thing about having a big family. Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody, thank you for your participation. What are we going to do now? It's the knowledge check 1.8. Combine the sentences, then compare answers with a partner. Okay, I'm the youngest in the family. The nice thing is I get a lot of attention. So the nice thing about being the youngest in the family is that I get a lot of attention. What about number two? I have a younger sister. The trouble is she always wants to borrow my clothes. What is the new sentence right here? This is knowledge check 1.8, okay, that you have in the platform. Uh, let me show you. 1.8 should be this one right here. The knowledge check, rewrite the sentences. So it's, it's the same exercise that we're solving right here, right now. So I have a younger sister. The trouble is she always wants to borrow my clothes. What do we have right there? Gabriel. Uh, the sentence would be the trouble with having a young sister is that she always wants to borrow my clothes. The trouble with having a younger sister is that she always wants to borrow my clothes. Okay, good. The trouble with having a younger sister is. Okay, very good. Thank you, Gabriel. Number three, I'm away at college. The bad part is that I miss my family. So who can help us with number three? Saul. Okay, I'm going to try. Uh, could be the bad part of being of being away at college is that I miss my family. Okay, very good, but the preposition is not right. Is With. the bad part no? Uh, Different preposition. About. Yeah, you say mm -hmm. the bad part about being away at college is that I miss my family. Okay, thank you, Saul. What about number four? 
I work at night. The worst thing is I can't have dinner with my family. Biden. The worst thing about I work at night. Okay. Is about, I about, can't have sorry, dinner. sorry, 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 sorry to interrupt. Okay. Uh, about is a preposition. So the worst thing about. I work at night. Mm -mm. Remember, uh, after prepositions. Working at night. Aha. Uh -huh. So the worst thing about working at night is. Working at night. Is I can have dinner with my family. Okay. The worst thing about working at night is that I can't have dinner with my family. Okay, very good. Thank you. And number five, um, I'm the oldest in the family. One bad thing is that I always have to babysit. <laughs> Saul. Okay, I'm going to try one more time. Well, okay. uh, one bad thing uh, about being the oldest in the family is that I always had to babysit. That is correct. One bad thing about being the oldest in the family is that I always have to babysit. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody, for here, your participation. Here, buddy, here. I'm sorry. Yes. What is a babysit? Babysit means that you have to take care of kids. Oh, okay. Uh huh. That's the thing. You have to take care of kids. That's why, um, well, in El Salvador, this is not very common, but uh, in, in the United States, uh, people hire babysitters, right? It's usually a lady, it could be a, a teenager sometimes, and they pay this girl, okay, to go to your house and take care of the kids while you go out with, with your wife, okay, or with your spouse in general. And they babysit. They basically keep an eye on your kids, okay, so that they don't get in trouble. So let's babysit. All right, that's really good. We don't have much time, so we're gonna have to move on here quickly. There is uh, some vocabulary here that I want you to study. It's basically just that, and then there's a listening exercise and a reading exercise. So we're gonna try to move over these uh, quickly because we don't have much time. We only have, wow, 10 minutes. So uh, now let's check. It's the same exercise we just sold. These are the answers. The first one is the example. You have it here. And then number two, three, four, and five, okay, those are the answers to the rest of the exercise. Okay, so if you haven't completed it, please do it. Remember that today you have to send this. Um, they inform me that it's today, not tomorrow. Okay, so we have to comply with what they tell us. Lesson objective 1.9. In this section, participants will learn compound family terms. What is a compound family term? It's a, it's a term made up of two different words that come together. So... Compound family terms match the family members on the left with the definitions on the right. You have this. Your great aunt is... Who's your great aunt? Who's your great aunt? You have A, your father's or mother's grandmother, your father's or mother's aunt, sorry, aunt, your, your, your son's or daughter's daughter, or your wife or husband's sister, or your brother's wife. What about this who is your great aunt who's your great aunt any idea a b c or d is this a bit confusing <laughs> maybe because of could be a bit confusing i understand No answers? Okay, Gabriela Alejandra. Uh, could, could be letter B? It is letter B. That's right. Your great aunt is your mother's or father's aunt. That's your great aunt. Okay, if, if, if your mother or your father has an aunt, that's your great aunt. Thank you. Number two, your granddaughter is... Who's your granddaughter? Uh, Gabriela Antonio yeah. and then Byron. It's letter C. It's letter C. It's your son or your daughter's daughter. Okay, that's correct. 
If your son or your daughter has a daughter, that's your great daughter, your, your granddaughter, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. Uh, Byron, number three, your sister-in-law is, who's your sister-in-law? Lara D. Yeah, it's your wife's or husband's sister's sister or your brother's wife. That's also your sister-in-law. Okay, very good. Um, number four, your great grandmother is. It, that will be obviously uh, Gabriela. No, sorry, you you participated first, right? I'm sorry. Is letter A? Um, your father or mother's grandmother. That's your great grandmother. Okay. So if the mother of your grandmother or grandfather is still alive, okay, that's your great grandmother, basically. Now uh, we have this exercise, which of the family members in the box can be combined with a prefix or suffix in the chart? Complete the chart with a partner. What does each term mean? Because there is not much time for us to complete this, I'm just pretty much going to give you the information. So what do we have? Great, there's the great aunt, great aunt okay? What's the definition of great aunt? Again, it's letter B. It's your mother's or father's aunt. There's your great nephew, right? So who's your great nephew? You have the definition here. Your great nephew is the son of your nephew or niece. That's your great nephew. The son of your nephew or the son of your niece. Great niece. Okay, who is the great niece? The great niece is the daughter of your nephew or the daughter of your niece. If you have a nephew and your nephew has a daughter, then that's your uh, great niece. There's the great uncle. Who is the great uncle? Uncle is the uncle of your mother or the uncle of your father. Okay, that's your great uncle. Grand, you have granddaughter. Okay, we know the meaning. There's the grandfather. I'm going to send this to you, by the way. There's the grandfather, right? Uh, grandmother, grandson. Okay, uh, there's the grand uncle. Okay. And uh, by the way, who's your who's your granduncle? Is the brother of your grandmother or your grandfather? Of course, that's your granduncle. Okay, the mother of your grandfather or the mother of your grandmother, the brother, right? The, there is uh, the great nephew. Okay, so the grand nephew. I'm sorry, the grand nephew is the grandson of your brother or sister. That's your grand nephew. If your brother or your sister has uh, a grandson, that will be your grandnephew. Similarly, you can have a grandniece. Who is the grandniece? Well, it's the granddaughter of your brother or the granddaughter of your sister. That's the idea right there. Now, there's the great-grandmother, okay? Who's your great-grandmother? Basically, the mother uh, of your grandfather or the mother of your grandmother. There's the great granddaughter, okay? Great grandfather. There's great grandmother again here. Uh, it's repeated. I apologize. And then there is great grandson. I'm going to delete this one. It's not necessary. Oops. Just let me adjust this very quickly. Okay. There it is. Going back. Okay, and then you can have the in-laws. Okay, remember all the people that become your family when you get married. <laughs> so uh, there is your sister-in-law, okay, your brother-in-law, your daughter-in-law, okay, your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, your sister-in-law, and your son-in-law. That's the vocabulary right there. Before we proceed, uh, do you have any questions about uh, this? Do you have any questions about the vocabulary here? Uh, any word or term that is not entirely clear before we finish because it's almost time? No questions? Okay, that's the case. I'm no going questions, to... teacher. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to send this to you so you can have it. Okay, um, yeah, what's up? There it is. So you have that information, so you can study that later too. All right, moving on. Again, I don't know why this happens. 
So give me a second. There is one listening activity that we have to complete over here. Listening activity, this is 1.11. Okay, everybody, I want you to take a close look at that. Exercise, listening activity. Instructions, listen to Victor tell a friend about his family reunion. What were they celebrating at the reunion? Choose the right answer. So the first one is, what were they celebrating? They were celebrating Victor's grandmother's 88th birthday. They were celebrating Victor's grandmother's 80th birthday, or they were celebrating Victor's grandmother's birthday in general. So uh, then you have this. How many people were there about? 80? Lots? 88, sorry. Lots, 80, 100, or several. Which place does he mention uh, people came from? Texas, Chicago, Florida, California, New Mexico. Texas, Florida, California, New Mexico. Texas, Chicago, Florida, Los Angeles, New Mexico. Or Texas, Chicago, Florida, California, New Mexico. Number four, who is the first relative he mentions was at the reunion? Okay, his grandfather, his uncle's cousin, his brother, his sister-in-law, his niece, his son, his mother-in-law, his cousin, or friends of the family. And the last one, who else besides relatives were at the reunion? Friends, co-workers, next door neighbors, or friends of the family? I'm going to play the track. I want you to listen. This is the listening exercise 1.11. And uh, wait, I don't have the track right here. There's a problem. Just give me one second. I apologize about this. It appears I forgot to include this. Okay, just it will take just a moment. Um, how can I download this over here? Just give me a second, please. The track is not ready. Sorry about that. So, um, teacher, nine p.m. Uh, okay, uh, we're just going to do this exercise. But if you have to, if you have to. Um, if you cannot continue. Uh, here uh it's okay you can you can uh uh leave the meeting no problem because it's it's already 9 p.m okay so just give me a moment as we do this okay i'm just gonna play the track here and uh i just uh, want you to listen and choose the right answer then we're gonna check okay last exercise today Family Reunion A. Listen to Victor tell a friend about his family reunion. What were they celebrating at the reunion? Hey, Victor, you're back in town. So how did it go? Uh, it was great. I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy it, but it turned out to be a lot of fun. Was your grandma surprised? Completely. She knew we'd do something special for her 80th birthday but she never expected that the whole family would turn up for a reunion. How many people were there? Lots. I'd say about 80 or so. Folks showed up from all over the place. We had people from Texas, Chicago, Florida, California, and even Mexico. I got to see people I hadn't seen for years, like Luann, my uncle's cousin. Actually, I don't think I've seen her since I was a little kid. Oh, and my brother Rudy was there with his wife and their new baby. Grandma's first great-granddaughter. That sounds like fun. So was there anyone there you didn't recognize? Yeah, but that was okay because as soon as we got there, we each got a name tag showing how we were related to Grandma. Like mine said, Victor, Anita's grandson, Hector's son. That's a cool idea. So you could immediately see how you were related to someone. Yeah, most people have changed a lot over the years. Plus, my mother-in-law came along because she hadn't seen any of these people since our wedding, so the name tags worked out really well. So were there other people like your mother-in-law? I mean, she's not really a relative. Oh, sure. There were quite a few people who weren't directly descended from grandma, like people's in-laws, neighbors, friends of the family. But their name tags said who they were and what the connection was. <laughs> Sounds like it must have been a lot of fun. I bet your grandma was happy. Yeah, really happy. Okay, so just uh, checking this. Um, what were they celebrating? 
who can tell me? So we can finish this. Gabriel. Uh, okay, and then Wendy. So Gabriel. They were celebrating Victor's grandmother 80th birthday. 80th birthday. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Wendy and then Elmer. Uh, Wendy, how many people were there about? Uh, 80. About 80 people. That is correct. Okay. Very good. Uh, Elmer, uh, which places does he mention people came from? It's Texas, Florida, California, and Mexico. Uh, Texas, Florida, California, and Mexico. Actually, it's a bit different. Okay. But, but thank you. Uh, who can tell me this one? Me. Okay, Wendy? Texas, Chicago, Florida, California, and Mexico. Texas, Chicago, Florida, California, and Mexico. That is correct. Number four, who is the first relative he mentions was at the reunion? Who knows the answer? Gabriela. His uncle Thompson. His uncle's cousin. That is correct. Okay, very good. And the last one, who else besides relatives were at the reunion? Gabriel. Friends of the family. Friends of the family. That is right. Very good. Okay, everybody, uh, as homework, you just have to solve this. It's the full house. I want you to read this, okay, and complete the exercise, which is just uh, multiple choice. That will be the last part. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to cover that, but we can check on Monday if you want. Remember, no class tomorrow because it's Friday. Okay, so I'll see you Monday, and I believe I have already uh, taken attendance in full. Um... Yeah, everybody's here. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll be seeing you Monday. Okay. Okay, teacher. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you Monday. Good night. Good night. See you Monday. Bye-bye. See you Monday. Good night. Have a great weekend.